All right, so I wanted to do a video on 4.10.2, considering how challenging this was some, for some folks on the quiz. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on, on this problem. Um, consider the diagram with the given markings to answer the following question. So here we have all of our relationships. One angle measure of 72 degrees has been given. The angles, the other angles that are not compromised of variables have numbers for convenience and should be used in your answers. So let's get some things straight here. The first thing that we can see from the diagram is line K is parallel to L, I should make that lowercase L. And we can also see, in contrast to our, the problem that was in the mixture review for 4.6, M is parallel to N. So there's a lot more congruency relationships in here. Angle, uh, alternate interior angles congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, same side interior angles are supplementary. Those are the three big ones that we're looking for. Alternate interior angle relationships, corresponding angle relationships, and same side interior angle relationships. If it helps you, I definitely think you should put this right there in the margin of your page, just to be a quick reference for, to remembering like, okay, what am I looking for? What kind of tools do I have to use? All right, so question A, name a pair of numbered alternate interior angles where K is the transversal. Okay, K is the transversal. So I'm looking at K, and here's my transversal coming off like this, which means that my parallel lines in this case would be M and N. So these are the relationships that we're thinking about here. We need to name a pair of numbered alternate interior angles. Okay, well, one alternate interior angle would be one, and the alternate interior alternate the transversal interior of the two parallel lines would be 11. So angle one and angle 11. That would be one case. All right, let me erase this then. Name the vertical angle to seven. So where are we looking at seven? And I, here's what I always recommend you guys do. Go ahead and mark off where that angle seven is just to kind of have it in our mind. We need the vertical angle to seven. So the angle across that, those four angles from seven, which would be five. That's what a vertical angle is. Okay, erase. Uh, name the angle relations between five and 14. Okay, so five and 14, where are we looking here? Here's five and here's 14. <laughs> All right, well, let's first of all, let's name our, our transversal. Our transversal in this case would be 11. So we can go ahead and mark our transversal. And what are the two parallel lines that the transversal cuts across? M and N. So now you can see that 5 and 14 are on the same side as the transversal and interior, the two parallel lines. So in this case, we would, they would be same side interior angles. That would be the name of the relationship. Okay, erase. See how every single time I'm remarking my page so I can really make it clear to me what angles I'm talking about here. So now it says name the angle relationship between 13 and 16. Well, here's 13 and here's 16. Um, a lot of you guys got tripped up on this one last time. You guys said that this relationship would be supplementary. Although these two angles are supplementary, that's the, not the name of their angle relationship. The name of their angle relationship is that they form a linear pair. Be careful there. That supplementary is not a relationship. It just means that the two angles add up to 180 degrees. Their, their relationship is that they form a linear pair. All right, next, uh, name the two corresponding angles to five. So what are we looking at here? Here's five. Well, there's two different situations here. We can either think about M as being the transversal that cuts across K and L. And if that was the case, the corresponding angle to five and then the same sort of position in this other four angle intersection here would be angle one. Angle one would be one corresponding. But what if we flip this around? And instead of M being our transversal, we thought of 
L as our transversal with M and N being our two parallel lines. And see, what would be corresponding to five? Well, that would be in the same position in this little four angle quadrant here, and that would be 13. So angle one and angle 13. Okay, again, lots of definitions. Next, solve for C. Okay, where's C? Where's C? Uh, oh, here's C. It's involved in this relationship right here. Okay, so when you solve for C, it'd be really nice if we knew some other piece of information. Well, one thing that I can definitely see here is that this angle C, if I think about N as my transversal, that cuts across K and L, one thing that I can see is that this angle right here, 2C plus 34, is corresponding to 72. So 2C plus 34 is equal to 72. Take 34 from both sides, and we see that 2C is equal to, geez, what is that? It's kind of weird. 34, 35, 36? Mm -hmm. no, 36 will be 70, so 38. So 2C is equal to 38 which would mean that C would have to be equal to, oh geez, what is this now? Uh, so 19? Go ahead and check my math. I'm pretty sure that's the case, which means C would have to be equal to 19. Again, the strategy there was to identify, okay, we need to find out this angle. Where is there another number that, that's here somewhere that we can go and, and go and solve for? And, uh, and we saw that 72 is something that we can, that we can use. Well, the next one says solve for B. So now if I'm thinking, okay, here's B. B shares a transversal with this angle that we just found out. We know that that's 72 degrees. Careful, it's not 19. C is 19. But that whole angle is 72 degrees. So... This angle and B share a transversal of L with two parallel sides, M and N. So then we know that there's a relationship between B and 72. What's the relationship between those two? Well, they're same side interior. They're on the same side as the transversal L and they're interior to the, uh, to the parallel lines, M and N. So we know that 72 plus B is equal to 180. So 180 minus 72, and that's what, 108? So we know that B has to be 108. Cool, making progress here. What is the name of the shape inside the two parallel sets of lines? Oof, so it's tricky. What's the name of the shape inside? So I think what we're doing is we're talking about this shape right here. Well, we know its opposite sides are parallel. We don't know anything about the angles. Well, actually we do, we know this one's 72, so that can't be a right angle. The best that we can say is that this shape is a quadrilateral with opposite parallel sides, meaning the name of the shape is called a parallelogram. Okay, finally, last but not least, name the angle relationship between 5 and 3. Here's 5, here's 3. We're talking about them sharing this transversal versal M. And the two parallel lines are K and L. And sure enough, they're on alternate sides of the transversal M on the interior of K and L. So that angle relationship is alternate interior angles.